Okay, so I'm going to go over some brief tuning issues with the San Juan 24. Things that will help you uh, be even, speed, tech, to tack, and get you better performance. First of all, the thing you want to do is make sure your rig is straight in the boat. And by doing that, you need to go from the center point of your force day to an even measurement back on the tow rail on both sides. That gives you an even spacing uh, from the bow back to the tow rail. Then you're going to use your main halyard and cleat your main halyard off and touch it to both sides so that you get the exact same measurement side to side in the boat. That just gets you square in the boat. But really important, as you tighten your rig up to the tuning numbers that we have in our tuning guide, you need to tune the rig straight. And then when I side up this rig with my, my left eye, I say, okay, I see the rig has got a slight dip in it and going off to the port side of the boat. The key is, is to make sure you use both eyes. And you always put your head in here. I see that same thing here. So what you're going to do is you're going to do even turns off and on. So like if the center of the mass is off to this side, on this lower, I'm going to let this off and I'm going to put this one on on even turn, turns so that I get the same tension from start to finish. And then once I'm done and I'm straight in the boat and I, and I double check my mass to straight side to side, now I'm going to worry about my fore and aft bend. And on, the, on these boats, we always like to see about a half to uh, right around a half inch of pre-bend in the boat, which just is a little bit of tension usually on your baby stay. And if you're having to tension your baby stay over, uh, you know, like this, see this is slightly loose. If, you, if you're tensioning it more than that, you're letting off these lowers on even turns on each side as you apply here, because they, they triangulate on each other and get to that point. So once you are got your rig straight in the boat and you feel like you've, you're even tack to tack and, and you straighten your rig using the lowers and uppers and you're at the tension from the tuning guide depending on your conditions, you want to record in a, in a log the amount of threads you are on each of your turnbuckles including your four state. And you do this by either taking a business card, uh, what's really good is to take a razor blade and you can actually count the threads. And by just going up, you can, you can hear the clicks in between and you count the threads. That way you know um, exactly what you are. And it might not be even side to side depending on if you had shrouds replaced or if you had any issues with the rig at any point. But you should be pretty close. And this way when you have tightened the rig and loosened the rig for different conditions, if you ever went backwards, you can immediately get very close to your tune position without having to start over the whole process. Okay, one of the keys when we're sailing upwind to make sure we're consistent from tack to tack and that we're getting the optimum performance out of the boat is the main trim and making sure that the boom is on center line for the particular main trim. Now one thing you want to do is have a very clear marking of where that traveler is and on a practice day for each condition come back and sight from your backstay straight down to make sure the boom is on center line because from the side of the boat when you're hiking you're going to notice that it, it's hard to tell exactly where it is. And I like to have the leeward side of the boom right on center line. That allows the clue is only just maybe an inch above center line. The rest of the sail is very close to center line. And that gives you the optimum pointing. And remember, we always trim that top batten parallel to the boom. We sheet it in until it's going square with the center line of the boat. Okay, the San Juan 24 is very narrow on the ends, meaning the stern's very tapered in and the bow is very tapered in with large overhangs. So keeping the weight center at the widest part of the boat is very, very important. And the, when I was racing the North Americans, I actually removed these winches and put them up on the cabin top so that the Genoa trimmer was not standing back here, but standing actually four feet further forward, which allowed the boat to sit more on its lines. And so if you don't have that system, one thing you want is to make sure that that Genoa trimmer can always get forward so the driver needs to sit as far forward as possible with passing room behind him so that you're sitting in the widest part of the boat which is at between these two stanchions. You want the entire crew packed into this, this space on the boat. It keeps the hobby horsing down, keeps the sail plan steady in the breeze and the turn turns into much more speed. Also at the widest part of the boat you have the most riding moment and riding moment is really um, stability, we call it, 
is stability is one of the big keys to upwind sail performance. So the San Juan 24 is really susceptible to backstay tension. Easing the backstay off it straightens the mast, it makes the main fuller, also allows the forestay to sag, making the Genoa fuller. And if you have too much tension, you'll get too much knuckle forward uh, on the jib halyard tension when you have the slack forestay versus the heavy forestay. So you need to work everything in conjunction. So when you pull the backstay on, the first thing you're going to notice is that you need to pull main sheet on because it's going to bend the mast, it's going to open the leech, and you need to pull main sheet on. It's going to make the main flatter, so the, so the main sheeted same on the top batten is going to be flatter with backstay on. So is the Genoa because the forestay is going to be straighter, it's going to pull shape out of that. The key is, is to not put it on too early, but don't allow yourself to get sucked sideways down the course without putting it on. They, but all three things have to work in conjunction with each other once you're starting to move uh, rig tension. Okay, so measuring the distance back for the side-to-side -side measurement of the mast, it's not critical how far you go back, you just have to go the same distance back on both sides. Now I've tied this around the forestay so that it comes out right at the forestay, so I'm going to be consistent on both sides. And I'm approximately alongside the mast where I come back here. So I'm going to go back to this point, and I'm going to make a mark right here on the tow rail, and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Make sure the lines are square, coming from the same point. You mark right here. Now that's where you're going to measure to on both sides. So you have exactly the same point. Because your holes may not align. Uh, other things might not be in case, but you're straight from the forestay, the exact same measurement back, and you can measure the mass side to side. Okay, so measuring the rake on a San Juan 24 is a little tricky because Everybody has different ways of attaching the halyard to the uh, head sail. Depending on the shackle length or not, or if you have a ball, you can't always get the same measurement. So the way we've gone uh, to circumvent this is the same way that many classes do. You take your halyard and mark it right at the top of the boom, vent, boom stripe. Now you're at the top of the boom stripe. It's a little hard to, to see the stripe here because it's a little faded on this boat. But then you swing this out Hit the forestay and now mark the forestay above that. So you, you'll put a piece of tape or a marker pen mark. I like to use um, fingernail polish because it holds up a little longer in the wire and I can constantly do that. And then you measure from this point to the deck. And that's what we do in the San Juan 24 tuning guide. We use that measurement down there to the deck. And so that gives you a solid bit of what your rake is. If you lengthen that up, that distance gets longer, which is more rake, which is better for light air. And if we shorten that up, this distance gets shorter, and that's better for heavier air.